Bianca! Thanks, you hear? You hear, you hear, you hear? <laughs> no one here but us rabbits. Damn it, where the hell did she go with that creep? Hmm, Marcus the Teenage Romeo was one cute creep of a soccer captain, I, I must say, even if it was annoying. If I was Bianca, I'd... Scratch that. If I was a girl like Bianca, I'd be way more into the captain of the girls' field hockey team. Grimmy, you don't get it. <laughs> she could be seriously out of her depth right now. I'd say that's a constant. Sh just... Be quiet. I need to think about where Bianca is right now. Well, why don't you start with that ladies' bar? She was way gay there before we showed up. Tonight. She's with Marcus, you clown. Don't call me names, Leo. Well, don't make light of this, Greenlee. She just lost her father. Who, as far as I could tell, was the only person she let herself rely on. She's scared. She's, she's vulnerable. And she might be trying to make a, a, a point to herself in a totally wrong way tonight. What, you mean like have sex with a guy? Man, if she tells him first, he might really... What? What? Like it. <sighs> Rope in that imagination, Leo. Bianca's on a date. She's a teenager. Teenagers mess around. It won't kill her if she kisses a boy, will it? What if she actually likes it? Oh, oh yeah, I get it. She'll be, then she'll be cured, right? Not cured, but if the kid's any good, she... <laughs> you know... Sometimes talking to you is like talking to this walking, talking character of a human being. You are being so mean to me. And you aren't understanding why I'm so worried. Come on, Leo. If Bianca can hold her own in a gay bar, she can handle the soccer captain under the bleachers. High school kids really do that? Wow. <laughs> I miss more than I realized. Oh, we can fix that. Want to pretend? I can be the cheerleader and you can be the um, foreign exchange student who can't speak a word of English. Leah, what are you doing? Come on, Bianca, answer. You gonna, you gonna get that? Um, no. Hey, Marcus, do you have anything left in your flask? Oh, yeah, sure. not in the mood. I can't stop thinking about Bianca. Good thing I know what that means. Leo, let it go. I can't. I was really abrupt with her, and I think that's why she left with that idiot Marcus. Please, aren't you giving yourself a little too much credit? I cut her off, Greenlee. I told her I didn't have any answers for her. You told her right. It, it was stupid. She's vulnerable. I know. You told me. Look, you are not responsible for the fallout from the I was a teenage lesbian chronicles, okay? If she's having sexual ambivalence issues, let her work it out like the rest of America and get a shrink. Or not work it out and just be out. You know? It's not that simple. She's a kid. She's got huge feelings and, and an even huger secret. I should have been a lot more caring. Are you having like baby sister envy or something? This isn't your job. Why is it so hard for you to understand that I, that I actually care about Bianca? It's not. But a 16-year-old lesbian wasn't the obstacle I thought I was going to have to face to get you in bed tonight. <laughs> you are impossible, you know that? No, I'm impossibly into you and I want to be alone with you. Is that so terrible? No. I mean, didn't we kind of make a pact about putting each other first? Yes, but... I didn't mean that we do it at the expense of somebody in trouble, Greenlee. What if Bianca isn't exactly the kind of trouble she wants to be in tonight? Just because she told you she was gay, you're going to be the gay police and make sure she doesn't go kissing on any fellas? I'm going to try on her cell phone. Fine. Whatever blows up your balloon. Make passionate love to me. Rescue 16-year-old lesbian from, from the arms of a high school Baldwin. Hmm, fine. You call it. Come on, Greenlee.
Am I interrupting a call? Uh, no. I'm just checking my messages for the umpteenth time. Leo still hasn't called. Oh, I'm sorry, dear. Well, Gramps, I shouldn't be bothering you with my angst. It's totally childish. So, what'd the doctor say? Oh, the ticker's fine. Great! Mm -hmm. See? All those walks you've been taking and riding the stationary bike? Yeah, yeah, well, you were, you were right to keep at me about that. I feel better than ever. Now, what is this about Leo? Oh, he's... He's becoming unreachable. Is it the new job? Maybe he's decided to take this opportunity with enchantment seriously. No, no, it's not that. It's his living arrangement. He sucked into Erica Kane's house like he grew up there. He's spending every minute with Bianca Montgomery. It's like, it's like he can't help being her big brother. <laughs> What's wrong with that? As long as Leo's living in that house, he only has time to rescue one person. And it isn't me. Bill don't see the problem with Leo living in Erica's house. I mean, he's not under curfew, is he? No, 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 no. It's nothing like that. Well, then what? They've got this masterpiece theater, real world slash survivor thing going on over there. Boy, you lost me. Leo gets sucked into all the drama, so we never get a chance to be alone together. Got to figure out a way to get Leo out of that house. But he doesn't have any place else to live. You're moving into dangerous territory. Why? Well, presumably Leo is living where he wants to live. Well, maybe he just hasn't had a better offer. We have room. Uh, oh, oh, no. Oh, forget it. No. Your grandmother would have a fit. Now, we don't need any additions to the family. That's it. Leo likes living at Erica's because he feels like he's part of a real family. Leo wants to belong to something solid. I can give him that. Are you sure? Granddaddy, it's time Leo, Happy, and I become our own dysfunctional family.